Well, as the refs have touched the ice, we get completely set, and I, the mic is completely spiking. It's fun. It's all right. As the mics, as the refs touch the ice, we get set for the second game of two games this Saturday evening. Now, for the team that is technically the home squad in this whole tournament, Oswego getting it done real simple and easy. An eight nothing win against TC and J earlier today, and a 1 p.m. puck drop, absolute demolish by the Lakers over the TC and J Lions. Tonight, it is a complete focus here as the Buffalo Ice Bulls, the two seed, they got a buy into this. They got to prove why they got the day of rest off. While well, the Canisius Golden Griffins, the team that had to fight their way in in a 6-2 absolute dump show against Rutgers last night, they're going to look to fight their way in. And today, tonight, I actually get to be joined along the side with two great guys. The Buffalo crew is with me for this one. It is none other than Ryan Tantillo and John Dwyer. So it's Howdy, good to have folks. you guys here. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, it, it seems to be going. It's, it's cold outside. It's uh, just checked. It feels like 11 degrees, and it is 30-some mile hour wind. It is freezing outside, and I think on both sides, I think they're pretty warm. They're ready to go, I think. Yeah, I think so. The ride for UB up here was uh, definitely a little bit of a challenge. Some icy roads on the throughway heading from uh, western New York up here to Oswego, but I think the Bulls have had enough time. We got to the hotel and got to the rink relatively early to get warmed up for this game. Players were out in the ice in their street clothes warming up uh, after the previous game, and now they're ready to go take in the ice. As Buffalo touches the ice surface, once again, you guys, the, the Ice Bulls, they got the, the two seats. So you got to buy into this. You got an extra day of rest. It's pretty nice to have, you know, let, let the coach kind of decide what you want to do here. Um, you're starting Gigi and Net, um, or not Gigi. I'm sorry. That's right. It's normally Gigi. I got to remember that. It's normally Gigi. It's not Gigi tonight. It's Krautzer who gets the start. Um, do you know why they started Crutcher? Because, like I just stated, and I messed up, <laughs> but it's all right. It's Gigi uh, GG is normally the guy you've had in net. Uh, do you know why Coach decided to put Crutcher in? Well, I don't know the exact reason. Like you said, Gigi is the normal starter. He's certainly been the number one goaltender all season. Um, I do remember in last year's playoffs, the Bulls had two different goaltenders. At that time, it was McDermott and Larray, and the Bulls didn't have a bye, so they played Larray game one, McDermott game two, and then had Larray for the championship game. So I think the logic is the same. Save your number one guy for a potential game tomorrow. It's risky, though. I mean, you're putting your number two against uh, a good team, a must-win game tonight. We'll see if it pays off. Yeah, we will definitely see as they will now announce the awards. I'll let them speak that out.
Well, as the National Anthem has concluded, we're going to get set here. So, yeah, this is a unique situation because, um, like yesterday, for the people that didn't tune in, yesterday it was Yursu in between the pipes for Kanishas. They've changed it. It is Kiryu, which is probably the same way that you stated, Ryan, uh, probably their move of Yursu being their number one guy, and they probably want to save him and the possibility of being in the championship game tomorrow against Oswego. So... Should be a fun one. This is a rematch of last year's NECHL championship. Of course, you know, Buffalo got that win. And so we'll see what they could do. It, it's a little different. You got different guys on each side. You know, some guys are coming in as their first years, and then you have guys who come back and definitely want to do what they did last year. Buffalo rocking the white unis with blue and gray trim. And Canisius rocking the dark blue unis with the yellow trim and white shoulders. Hansen will take the faceoff for Canisius against Peterson. Puck is dropped. The winner of this plays Oswego tomorrow afternoon. But we must find out who that will be. Nice little battle there in front in the penalty boxes. And quickly, Zach Reen now leaves it for Hansen. Hansen trying to get it across. Not going to happen. As now coming down is Kelly. He got chipped off the puck. Puck goes down. And now back the other way. Trying to set it up here. White Duck with it out for Canisius. He'll send it across. A little saucer pass off the boards. Trying to push it forward. Hansen's going to try to dump it in, but instead it will be Buffalo who regains it, and it's Peterson with it. Peterson trying to chip it up. Trying to connect his way with Kelly. Kelly around one defender. Spin move. Nobody there on the other side. Don't know if he knew if anyone was there. Zach Green will leave it behind. He'll leave it behind for De Pedrina. The name that is a tongue twister and a half is a good hit there along the boards on North. And Canisius needs to get this puck out. Looks like Buffalo is going to play the old hit him hard in the beginning and see what happens. Schmidl trying to get it up. Cody couldn't connect and is across now. Canisius trying to get this up. It's Oak Olovich who gets it up top and that is sent in by North. And Ahern trying to get it there but instead it's wrapped around now in the far corner. Oakwood's quick shot and a block there. Buffalo going to try to get this puck out as quickly as possible. Looks like Canisius is trying to respond to their own way. Puck gets chipped up in the far corner. Left there. Canisius looking to come back after it. Reed with it. Goes round one. Comes in with two defenders on him. Reed now nifted it on goal. Shot saved. Trying to nift a backhand. Door closed. And the defense by Buffalo. Somehow that puck gets chipped to the far corner. Good hit there. Right on to Yurkovsky. Puck free, though. And now Buffalo, they need to get this puck out real simple and easy. Dovgin going to send it out. Quickly connect with Schmalv. And sit back out. Trying to reset here. Quickly across. And chipped up forward. This puck is a little interesting. This ice surface has had multiple games on it. So we'll see how that is as it goes right to the glove hand and holding it quickly for the whistle is Kiryu. And in that first two and a half minute or so uh, period to start this game, the only real offensive chance was generated by Brendan Reed carrying it in for the Golden Griffins. He wasn't able to get the shot on net, but it was loose in front of Krutzer. There was a block shot and then one shot ended up on goal and really the only scoring chance we've seen so far in the early going of this game. I cannot deny that as that seems to be the only one, but Buffalo right now pushing it in, trying to get that puck on goal, but instead White Duck's going to saucer it out. Canisius is going to try to dump it forward. Quickly back the other way. Helgenberger sent it in. Puck in the corner, sent around, and Zach Green will take it for Canisius, bounce it off the glasses up front. Now with it is Hansen in over the blue line in the offensive zone, trying to stop onto the defender, but that ain't going to happen as that gets chipped up quickly and back in all the way down. Chipped in by Triglo, and that will be a touch-up for an icing by the 55 of Bowen. Now, obviously, you weren't here yesterday, but these Canisius Golden Griffins, they, they were on fire last night. They played a really good game. They shut out Rutgers basically in the first period. They, they just shut the door automatically. They kept it going, and... I think Buffalo's playing a great game of hockey right now, just making sure that they understand that they're about at the same level as Bowen. Or, sorry, North trying to get a shot on, and that goes to the far corner. Ahern's, and now, pinned to the boards there, North. Ahern's 
North chips it up to the blue line. Quick shot by Nendurf is blocked. Puck goes around. I'm trying to get it out here is Buffalo. Picked up. Skating back the other way. Kelly. Quick shot. Say made with the right leg pad. Kelly gets a rebound. Trying to wrap it around. And not going to happen. Puck to the corner. Chipped up quickly by Gallagher. Across. Blocked there in front. Puck goes to the far corner. Now the other side. Gallagher looking. Sends it up with a quick slapper on the blue line. A glove save made by Kureyu. Definitely the best possession for the Bulls in the offensive zone so far in this game. Ryan Kelly got it started. His initial chance was taken away, but he got his own puck back. The Bulls definitely looked faster on that shift than the Golden Griffins, and then it ended up with a shot from the point and a glove save. Reichel now going to take the face off for Buffalo. Trying to win this offensive face off. Right up, tangled with it. Trying to get that puck free there. And free is it is Rivet. Rivet had one of the six goals yesterday for Canisius. And they're battling to get here. Trying to connect with Namel, but that ain't going to happen. As Reichel is called off sides. Foresta just a little bit late getting back into the neutral zone after the Bulls won back possession and the play whistled off sides. 16-01, early stages of the first period. Still no score. A 3-1 lead for Buffalo on the shot column. Gallagher wins that draw for the Ice Bulls, which I must say is a unique way of rolling with your college nickname. <laughs> Gallagher trying to chip it up here on the red line. Oh, oh Arkewood just got sent into his own bench as Bowen sends around arm raised and a penalty coming up on the Ice Bulls. And a power play here early for Canisius. Yeah, I think that's going to be number 21, Dylan Foresta for UB. He got tangled up in front of the Canisius bench, and the official's going to send him to the box. And that was something that UB head coach Morgan Von Hademan warned his team about before the game today. Canisius is going to do their best to get under your skin, try and draw penalties, make you make mistakes. So far, that's been the strategy, and it worked. And the Golden Griffins are going to head to the first power play of the game. Ahearns is going to take that. Face off for Canisius, trying to get a goal here early. Reed with it. He'll go to the left side circle. Turn on the defender, try to get up to Schwartz. Schwartz will connect. Bouncing puck down, he gets chipped out, but it goes right into the Buffalo bench. And Alto is right there. Yeah, tough tough bounce, honestly, for UB. They were about to get a clear out of the uh, their defensive zone, and instead of bouncing off the boards, the puck was just six inches too high, ended up in the UB bench, and the draw is going to come on their side of the red line. So face off just outside the offensive zone for Canisius. And speaking of which, Canisius wins that draw. Schwartz trying to get it up. Ahearns takes possession. Trying to get that puck around the boards. It shall go completely around, and the Bulls will send it down back the other way. Nifty stick handle move by Correu to make sure no defender gets that puck, and he leaves it for Ahearns behind the net. He has Schwartz and Reed behind him. He'll give it across to North. North will give it to Reed. Reed has Alto following him in. Reed will stop on the left face-off circle. Now down on the corner. Alto is really battling for him. Puck goes up. North will back in it back to Reed. Reed has Ahearns on the far side. Give it to Ahearns. Back down low. They score. And a cross check on him after the shot. Oh, my, oh, my. Neymol got the goal. Then Neymol got cross-checked, and now a little fisticuffs. Yeah, huge contact after that goal score. First of all, fantastic setup by the Golden Griffins to move that puck and end up with the really just easy tap-in on the back door. And then after the play, some really aggressive pushing and shoving. Yeah, I mean, that was a weird response. I don't know. Are there, there is going to be penalties coming out of this. North is in the box. And Ian Mackay for UB. So Mackay and North. Jagger North. What a name. Jagger is the first name. So I'm assuming we're going to get roughing. Did, sometimes they don't give the signal, and which this is the time they don't give one. So I'm assuming roughing. That would be the my. I, would, I don't know if you agree with me on that one, Ryan, but I'd assume that would be the call to give both of them. That's what I would do, especially because it was after the play. Just give two players a rough. Um, looks like they're going to keep... They're going to do... 
Four skaters out there for UB at the moment, and four for Kanisha. So they're going to put these up on the board, it looks like. Yeah, but I believe we're going to be four on four as they finally get that penalty off the original penalty that was the cause of that power play goal. So a little open ice, and if you're Buffalo, yeah, yeah, you got a penalty, but also did Canisius. You got open ice. It's four on four. It's only 14. You're about just a, just a little over five minutes into this hockey game. You're only down one nothing. This is open ice. It's a good opportunity to tie it. As that is Canisius now with it. Oak Olevich leaves it over and trying to skate his way through the defense was Nadurf. But able to get it back now is Peterson for Buffalo. A lot of open ice here. Peterson with possession, has the options, sends it up top for Helgenberger. Quick shots, a save made, and the rebound comes out, and Bowen leaves it behind for Oak Olovich. What a name, Oak Olovich. Love that name. Nadurf trying to chip it up. Couldn't connect with Bowen, and now skating back the other way is Schmidl. Has options. He's trying to get it across. Trigger the shot. Blocked by Bowen. Back the other way. Comes Canisius. Calhoun is the one with it. And he'll backhand it in. And he'll go for a line change himself. 103 remaining on this. Four on four. 13.45 to go. First period. An early goal by Canisius. Makes it a one nothing lead. And a big hit by Trigolo to go right to the bench. Buffalo's responding with Furies. There's a gaping net. And I don't think anyone on Canisius realized Buffalo was right there. And a lot of, of physicality coming out of both sides. Ahern's with it. The ref's showing here. We got a little jingle going play. behind the play. I think we have a I think we have an ice bolt down behind it. But we'll see what comes out of that. As now Reed takes possession. Quick shot goes high and wide. It was I'm not for sure who that was actually down the Buffalo side. Alto will take it. Back over. Give it over to Schmidl. He'll give it across. Back over. And a quick shot goes wide. Schmittle's right there. And out of his crease and out of the sideway. That could have been a weird move. Alto across. Save made. Rebound. And Schmittle can't connect to get it in. Aaron trying to get it out. Reed with it. He'll chip it over to Bowen. Bowen on a one-on-one -on -one with Alto. Bowen with a quick backhand. And that Back one goes around on the boards. Back across. North. Over. Stick handle and trying to throw it in front and Hansen couldn't connect. And now coming back for Buffalo and skating in is Dovgan and a quick shot is a save made. Dovgan trying to go around the defense of Hansen, but that won't happen. Glove down. Namol, the lone goal scorer, trying to get it up to Hansen. Dovgan goes over, sends it off the boards. As you're trying to get it over to Shlomov. Shlomov. Backhand and around. We've approached just eight minutes into this first period of play. The winner plays Oswego tomorrow at 1 p.m. And it is a completely different hockey game than what we had earlier this afternoon. A lot more physicality as that one goes back. And going back for it is Okolovich. And now gets free is Zacharine. Zacharine has Hansen breaking in, trying to connect, but too many boys in white, if you will. And now back the other way comes Buffalo. Shalomov with it. He's a backhand. Dovkin with a shot blocked by the front of White Duck. And I believe that went off his right leg. Push down, back down. Douglas got it back down, thrown in front. Goes back out. Trigolo has to go after it. Krautzer will leave it for Trigolo and try to connect to Reichel, but it won't happen. Instead, it's Canisius who gains back the puck. As Nadurf sends it around. Little collision there in the corner boards. Puck across. Back over. And a quick shot. Sees a bouncing puck in front of the defense. And now Reed will take possession over the red line. Reed's getting into the offensive zone. He had Rivet with him. Reed now in the corner. Getting hit there. Puck bouncing around. Zagalewski. Good move there. Schwartz now on top of the blue line. Shot is blocked in front of the skate of Gallagher. Down low Reed, up top Schwartz on the blue line. Schwartz across, Nadur with a shot, locked in front, there's a gaping side backhand, blocker save made, pushed to the corner. Reed, he had two of the six goals yesterday. Ahearns throws it in front, gets it over to Nadur. Nadur with a slapper, blocker in front, it went off the side of a defender, I believe. And now Buffalo's trying to push that puck out, blocked down by Schwartz, and Zajac sent him down, and the linesman blew that whistle. And that 
brings an end to a really long period of um, unstopped play. We're almost halfway through this first period now, 10-16 on the clock. Those four-on-four, four, uh, that two-minute four-on-four period of play produced no fruit for either team. After that, Canisius has actually taken the lead in the shot category, 6-5, to five, and the Bulls are getting their first offensive zone draw in a little while here, and they're going to play it around. As that one goes around, trying to battle here just on the far side of the Buffalo bench. Quickly skating in a blocker, save made, and that shot by Peterson goes rifling around. Top of the blue up. Gets trickled out, and Canisius comes back the other way. Lukomsky will send it in on goal, and it chipped back the other way. How about having a goalie like that? How about I throw it in? Kelly's the one with it, and the shot is blocked, and Kelly's trying to poke that forward. Puck around. Quickly gaining it back now. Buffalo trying to set something up quickly. Puck across. Lovsky got it over. Quick shot. Ring the top crossbar. Kanish is trying to figure out, oh boy, we got to get this one out because Buffalo's having a field day with a shot. And Selesky got it. Quick shot. Sakowski with a quick shot. That one was blocked. And a quick shot again. This time blocked by the front. Another save. Rebound in front. And luckily there's a Kanish's dark blue uniform to send that one the length of the ice. And that was the Bulls' top line out there. Kelly, Belinsky, and Peterson generating a lot of offensive chances on that shift. They'll head to the bench. Puck across now. Schwartz with it. Trying to connect, but getting a stick there is Cody. And now back the other way with a quick shot is Sakalovsky. Sakalovsky. <laughs> We're going to have fun in the first period, folks. <laughs> and Durf trying to chin it up, but it gets quickly stopped in a score. A rifle of a shot from Anthony Cody. Ties it at one. And you got to like that response. Yes, certainly, and I mentioned the shots were 6-5 to five, um, at our last break in favor of Canisius. The shots are now 9-6, to six, and that only took a minute for the Bulls to really amp up the pressure. A couple of high-quality uh, opportunities in the last minute and a half. Cody got oh, just a bit of space and put a lot behind that shot, and uh, he had a huge goal in last year's final against these very same Canisius Golden Griffins. That, that last year, excuse me, it was in the championship game here in the semifinal to tie it at one. As that puck goes down and quickly backhanded around by Kareyu, but quickly now taken by Duranda. Duranda will backhand it in on goal and quickly stopped for the whistle by Kareyu. Well, 8.17 to go in the first period, a 1-1 hockey game. It's been back and forth, but a good response by Buffalo to tie this one up and a good crowd of Buffalo faithful have definitely shown out. Not would you would you agree or would you disagree? I don't know. Considering don't, it's a three-hour drive for both of these schools to get here, I'm I'm a little impressed by the uh, the numbers. You you like to see it. A lot of parents and family and friends supporting their guys. Pr probably a pretty evenly matched crowd too because these teams play so close together. Very much so. About a 15-minute ride. You said as that is a blocked shot in front. That one could have been a quick one. Ogolowski with a shot, save made. Rebound, Calhoun couldn't get that one going. Calhoun will try to send it around, but it's quickly intercepted. And back the other way comes Buffalo. This one is skated by Griffin. Gets it up the ice and trying to go around the guy, and he will get around him for a quick second. Throw it on goal, and a save made. And now pushing and shoving as Belinsky was the one that ripped that one, and a little more pushing and shoving. And like you said, I don't, I don't know if you consider Canisius as your rival, but you said 15 minutes apart. I, I'd assume this is basically a rivalry as a playoff game. Yeah, it's certainly a rivalry game. These two teams um, in the ACHA, there is not a closer opponent for either of them than the other, if that makes sense. So UB's closest geographic opponent is Canisius and vice versa within the ACHA. So certainly better rivals. Niagara is really the only other team I think that UB dislikes as much as Canisius. The difference is, this is also a league rivalry. So it's geographic, <laughs> and they play each other two or three times every season. So there's certainly bad blood, and you're starting to see it here. These teams want to rile the other one up and draw penalties, and Canisius has already done that. I think it's going to go both ways. As David Trina trying to get it up to Yurkovsky. Yurkovsky will give it over to Dave Padrina. As that goes back down, and Creer will have to reset himself. Over to Yurkovsky. And he's trying to go around two bull defenders, but these ice bulls 
They get ice in their veins, if you will, folks. As skating in now in the far corner. McCall up top, trying to connect to a far man on the f on the blue line, trying to get it down low. As Trigolo will throw it on. Trigolo uh, trying to throw it on, but now Rivet has it. And he's trying to get that over, but it's stopped on top of the blue line. As Yurkovsky rebounds it. Yurkovsky will bounce it off the Canisius bench and dump it down by Rivet, and that will be a line change for the Golden Griffins, a much-needed one it looked like. It looked like they were getting pretty tired out there. As now the puck goes around, and Nadurf trying to get it across off the board. Schwartz trying to push it down. Naple will just backhand it in, and a line change for him as well, as that is a glove down by Ahearns, and he'll skate it in. Ahearns, round one, round two, quick shot, save made. Rebound gets pushed out. And Reed got knocked down. I think he caught an edge, actually. That puck is still in front. And Buffalo needs to get this puck out as Dovkin threw it around the other way. Bounced out. And now on the red line, Reed will take it, dumping into the far corner. Bounced off the boards. Elgenberg trying to get it out, chipped out in front. Now on the red line, Schwartz will send it in. Back the other way, Buffalo looking up. It's Sekoloski. Sekolovsky, dumping it down, quickly stopped by Schwartz. Now Bowen has it, and he'll backhand it towards the run line. A little back and forth. This is the part of the hockey game where both teams are trying to reset, and they just can't because the other one's bugging them. Schwartz getting nudged off the puck. Puck in the far corner to the right or the left side of the Canadiens' goal. Sekolovsky with a shot blocked by Ahearns. We'll have to readjust. Sekolovsky, throw it across. He'll connect and get chipped up the boards by Dovkin. But there is Bowen. Dovkin's able to gain back possession. And a penalty coming up. It's Dovkin who touches up interference. The call. And Buffalo for the second time tonight on a penalty kill. Yeah, and again, the composure for UB is becoming a bit of a problem here in this first period. The second penalty for them, the third actually, the third penalty, it'll be the second power play for Canisius. And, you know, they scored a really nifty goal. Canisius did on their first man advantage. And the game's tied once again. Five minutes on the uh, game clock, two minutes on the power play, and Canisius is going to try and retake the lead. Faceoff will go to the left side of the Buffalo goal, and speaking of which, the Ice Bulls will dump it towards the red line before it is quickly gloved down by Yugolovic, and he tried to get that up, but it's quickly back the other way, and Nadurf will have to wrap it around. Yugolovic will leave it over. Calhoun will throw it around again. Nadurf will come after it in the corner. Instead, he'll go on that board. De Petrina will throw it in. De Petrina is the closest guy to the blue line, so he's the one that's going to play the guy that tries to keep it in for Canisius. And then Nadurf decided, I'll keep it on the blue line as well. Down low, Cahoon with a shot. Same made rebound, trying to nudge it in there. Every stick on the ice except one, and that baseball maneuver did not work in favor of the Golden Griffins. And with four and a half to go in the first period, 1.15 to go on the power play for Canisius. A 1-1 hockey game. That has seen about everything you could see in a first period of play. Nadurf now into the offensive zone. Quick shot is high and completely high and into the netting and a stoppage of play. And on that previous possession for Canisius in the offensive zone, you're really seeing a lot of juicy rebounds being left out by Crutzer on the saves he's making. The first attempts on the shots by the Golden Griffins are making their way through the UB defense. Crutzer's having to react quickly, and he's not doing a great job of controlling rebounds, which does not bode well for the UB uh, penalty kill here with a minute to go. Reed now. Left side, Schwartz. Schwartz back over to Reed. Reed. Reading his options. Trying to get it over to Namo, but it was blocked in front. It gets pushed out and back over the red line, and this time it'll go all the way 200 complete feet back down the ice. That was a great play by Anthony Tregilio. He was named first team NECHL defense before this game, and fantastic play from his knees to bat that puck out of the zone. Skating in now is North. He'll wrap it around. Trying to get up there is Ahearns to Schwartz. Schwartz on top of the blue line. He'll backhand it down to North. North of the kick shot. Namol actually got a part of it, but it was the but I think it was also blocked by the Buffalo defender. Pushed out North now, left side. He'll go down now. Namol can't get it in. Instead, it's Schwartz. Schwartz now Reed. Reed top of the blue line down low. North trying to poke it in. He'll score. Very similar to that first goal for them. So North makes it 2-1 Canisius in a very unique way. 
throwing the monkey off the back. And that's twice now on the power play for Canisius. They're two for two. The Bulls are putting themselves in a bad spot by continuing to take penalties in this game. And that setup by Canisius, very effective once again, looking for the backdoor tap in. It's worked twice for them. And they have the lead once again. So 3.24 to go and counting. Zach Green takes it. A quick shot's blocked and high. And man, that one could have touched the moon. That one went on top of the netting. Well, now just 3.19 to go. First period, a 2-1 lead now for Canisius. And this is a completely different hockey game than Canisius played yesterday. They pretty much dug Rutgers a complete hole. Couldn't get out. You know, Rutgers couldn't get out of that hole completely. And um, this is completely different. And Buffalo has definitely showed on why it is. But Canisius has the lead. But you can't doubt out Buffalo. They're playing some great hockey so far through the first. Yeah, this the is the type of up. game I expected. Puck comes up. Cody's the one with it. Throwing across. Now with it is Alito. Alito? Alito? Aletto. Aletto. Ah, Leto. Okay. Ah, there's an ah. I'll tell you what. It, it is what it is. It's good to have you guys in the booth because I'd be brutaling these names. I know I would. Puck now gets tipped out. Alito with it. And Alito will skate in. Alito with a shot. Save made. And the rebound gets pushed out. Zacharine will push it down. Career trying to get it up. Alito says no. And man, the guy who I was just complaining about how I couldn't pronounce his name is pretty much playing the hockey game. <laughs> Puck across. <laughs> trying to get that over there with Sekulowski. Sekulowski and that will get sent back even further to where Yurkovsky will take possession. Now back is Creer. And now Rivet has it. Rivet has the guy who had also one of the first two goals. Is now at ring the crossbar. Rivet riveted the crossbar. He had Namel on his far side. Namel got the scoring going. But Rivet said no. And so Rivet, Rivet did one right out of the crossbar. And a stoppage of play with 1.58 to go. And we're in that part of the opening period where how can we finish and head to the locker room on a good high note as North will take the face off. And now down. Buffalo trying to find a way to get this puck up the ice. Quickly stopped by Nadurf, but Kelly's there. He also had a good teammate in Belinsky who tried his best, but Ahern's is going to backhand it out. Leaving it behind the net now as Trigelo, Trillo, Tri yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, Offsides is the call. <laughs> yes. I butchered about three Buffalo names with the Buffalo guys in the booth. I, I, I think Ryan's going to get a little upset with me. No, we'll figure it out. He'll figure it out. It ain't nothing, right? 128 to go at Offsides call. Face off will be, interestingly, it will be just outside of the Buffalo bench, just to the left of it just outside the Buffalo offensive zone. Peterson will win that draw for Buffalo, trying to push it up, but Zach Green will take it from him. And Zach Green has Hanson, trying to throw it in front for Hanson, but the puck was completely wide of a pass. Left side of the goal now behind. Zach Green trying to low a little poke action, forces him in the boards, he will, with Peterson. And Hagelberger will also join in on that board battle for Buffalo. Hanson threw it in front. Nobody there in a blue uniform could connect, and it goes all the way back down. Schwartz across. Nadurf trying to push it up. Calhoun will go after it. Leave a backhand to Hansen, who gets nudged off the puck even further. Now with it is Nadurf with a backhand. Blocked in front, rebound in front again. Calhoun couldn't nudge it in. 40 seconds now remaining in the opening frame. Douglas will push it back behind. And pushing it up there. Back around it goes. 25 now. Rivet's going to keep it on possession. Quick shot. And a save made by Crutzer. And I think at this point with 22 seconds left, I mean, obviously, UB is going to want to go into the intermission tied. But realistically, you just want to keep the score where it is, heading to intermission with a one-goal game. Don't let Canisius get a cheap one across in the waning seconds. 
of the opening period. Very much so. You want to make sure you come out of this first period with as little damage as possible. And you can't say that both sides have played a good game as that puck is intercepted. And speaking of which, Buffalo has a chance here thrown in front. Quick shot is a save made. It was Alito who Alito who had the opportunity. And about three or four white uniforms were also in front of that crease. But it was Correu who said no. 5.3 to go. And if you're Buffalo, an offensive faceoff. If you win this, possibly get a shot off. And unfortunately, it'll be a tangle up by Reed. And Bowen will just hold it in the boards for about the last second and a half. And the first 20 minutes come to a close. 20 minutes in the book. Shot Callum Canisius 15. Buffalo 12, where it matters on the scoreboard. Canisius leads with a 2-1 lead, and it was back and forth in this first period. Yeah, back and forth, evenly matched game, like I think most people expected. Two teams that, you know, had solid regular seasons. They know each other well. We talked about the rematch of last year's final. I think it's going to be down to the wire again. Uh, both teams, they seem composed at moments, but after a while, they fall apart. They, they're having a good time with their set-piece play. They're doing well setting it up, but at times they just look sloppy, but I mean, Kamis just put two in so far. You do with one, but look forward to a great game. I think I can speak for both Ryan and John. We are very much in waiting for a quick one. This is going to be a show of a game. It's a battle. The winner plays Oswego. Simple as that. Well, 20 minutes in the books. It's a 2-1 lead for the Canisius Golden Griffins after 20. We'll be back at about 15. There's 40 minutes remaining. Anything can happen in the sport of hockey.
And as we get set for the second period of play, it's a 2-1 lead for Canisius after 20 and a 12, a 15 to 12 lead in shots. But don't let that one confuse you, folks. It has been back and forth hockey all game so far in the first 20. And as Buffalo seems to be ready to go in the tunnel, and the refs have touched the ice, we get set. And Ryan, I'll tell you, you can't deny that this might become one of the games to watch throughout the whole entire playoffs. This is the closest game we've had. That's a great point. You're right. I mean, the first round games were, were really not close, and you kind of expect that when you have uh, the 5 and 6 seed coming in. And then earlier today, you had Oswego just walk right over TCNJ after they upset RIT. But this is really the closest game we've had so far. And to that point, I know for a fact UB was rooting for RIT to win last night because they did not want to play Canisius in uh, this semifinal round. They would have much rather faced RIT. And I think it shows with how close this game has been. And, you know, they know Canisius has it out for them. This is, this is a team in Canisius that is set on getting revenge, not only for last season, but for this regular season. The Bulls beat them at home and away. So this has really been um, a chance for Canisius to, to rewrite the script. Yeah, if I'm Canisius, I'm going to keep pestering Buffalo. Buffalo, the key to this one is stay disciplined. That's their biggest issue so far. They've been seeing the box first period for almost the entirety. They feel like Canisius was on the power play a lot more than Buffalo even saw the uh, offensive zone. So I'm Canisius, keep fighting. Keep fighting them and make sure to take them off. Well, the center ice seems to be ready to go. A face-off at the center logo. The second period of play getting ready to go. It will be Reed taking the face-off. He will lose that face-off to Peterson. And now it is Tregilio who got it up. Now Reed will backhand it in. And now it's North skating in for Kinesis. And Tregilio will send it up and back the other way. Peterson now with it. He'll skate in. Has Kelly to his left. He'll switch with him. Try to dump it in even further. Reed will go after it in the corner. Reed trying to get it out for Canisius, trying to get this game rolling. Here's Ahern's, has North. Actually had another man to his far side, but he gets quickly taken. And trying to get it back the other way is Helgenberger as it's stopped on the blue line, gloved down by Reed and pushed to the corner. Tregilio will go after it, and he'll back in and around. North will intercept. North threw it in front and score. Ahern's lights the lamp for Canisius here early in the second. We're just 43 seconds into the second period and a 3-1 lead for Canisius. And the Golden Griffins are building momentum. That's now two unanswered goals for them. That's their first goal at even strength in this game. And a great setup there below the goal line, throwing it in front for the one-time shot. Nobody had a body on the goal scorer. And Canisius has the 3-1 lead. Well... That draw is won by Buffalo, and Buffalo, as Cody sends that on goal, blocker save made, pushed in front. Nobody in a white uniform could get a stick on it. Aletto was the only one who actually could have possibly got a stick on it. As now Hansen skates in for Canisius and puts it on goal. On right leg pad, block save made in a, into the netting. So Canisius now with a 3-1 lead, and have extended their lead back to a two-goal lead. So trying to keep it going but don't credit out Buffalo this is a physical hockey game and we saw Buffalo get a goal in the first because of the physicality and being able to set things up so anything can really happen between these two squads as Aletto wins that drawing out Griffin with it North trying to push it down Aletto wrap it around now Cody with it bounces it off the glass Nadurf trying to kick it forward and Buffalo now pressuring in the offensive zone puck in the corner the left side Pushed out, pushed right back in there. That was Cody who sent it in and out in the other corner. Kind of throw it in front. Speaking of Cody, he trying to take a shot, but unfortunately his blade couldn't touch the puck. Nadurf now with it around the defender. He'll leave it for Reed. Reed up top north. North. Jagger North, a unique name, right to the glove hand and dropped quickly. And left for Cody. Knocked off the puck. Reed takes it. Reed looking for options. Reed trying to read the play. Down low, Namol with it. Namol turning. Top of the blue line, back across. It's Bowen. Bowen with a shot. Blocked in front. And back the other way comes Buff. Over to Cody. Cody skating in. He has Schmidl with him. Back in. In front. 
Aletta with a shot, blocked in front, it's in front of the net, Cody can't get it to go, and he finally does! Back of the net, it's Schmidl! And it's a one goal game once again! Yeah, Chucky Schmidl with fantastic effort there. Cody brought the play onside, threw it to Aletta who took the shot, and then on the rebound, Schmidl had a couple of attempts to try and bat it out, it was loose in the crease. Cureo got out of position, and finally Schmidl just kept up with the play, just an, a scrappy effort goal, and I think that's exactly what UB needs. They, they're not going to win this game by being fancy, that's for sure. So, you know, they say a two-goal lead is is uh, the worst lead in hockey, especially this early. Buffalo with some momentum of their own after falling behind by two goals. As Dovkin trying to send that up the boards, and Buffalo gets one goal. They're trying to get another one thrown in front. Dovkin was the one in front as that one goes rifling around by Douglas. Hook down low, trying to wrap it around the boards is McGuy. And back around is White Duck trying to send that up. And Zach Green trying to break the defense. Calhoun couldn't get the puck instead. Back the other way, Dovkin will send it across. White Duck, it went off of a weird bounce of his equipment. And now Zach Green trying to push her in as Sekolowski was trying to dump it back the other way. But instead, Canisius puts it in the four corner. Dovkin, back across, connects with Douglas. Douglas will dump it far corner. Schwartz having a little poking match with Dovkin in which Reed will take possession of that and go the other way for Canisius. Reed trying to go around Tregilio, and Tregilio says no. He got it on towards the boards, but Aherns was there to get that puck. It thrown in in front. North, it went off of his skate and not off the blade of his stick in which you want that rebound to occur. Reed trying to throw it up to the blue line. Reed throws it around this time around the boards. Virgilio will sit it around. Kelly across. Connects with Peterson. And a hit in there in front as Peterson rifles on a glove save. Give a windmill to him says Kareyu. 16-17 second period of play. A 3-2 lead for Canisius in a back and forth hockey game to say the least in the middle of the Deb. Yeah, five goals already and we're only four minutes, not even into this second period. Uh, a little bit higher scoring than I personally anticipated. Is this another good look by Belinsky? save made with the glove? That's been impressive too for me tonight. Correo's glove has been outstanding. He's now made 14 saves on 16 UB shots. A high shot total in this game and a high goal total so far in this game. Yeah, something when, when Canisius was warming up, Correu was like really telling him to keep shooting that glove side. And I think that's because, and we've noticed in something you pointed out, that glove hand is pretty much his go-to golden glove, if you will. Bowen across, dumped in quickly by Okolovsky right towards the goal. Now chipped off the glass and back the other way by Haugenberger. But now Bowen will take possession and give it across back to Okolovsky, who that puck is going somewhere it can't <laughs> and a whistle blows. I think it popped up into the UB bench and just nicked a player's uh, glove or, or stick or something like that and the play was blown dead and uh, finally getting a little bit of uh, a slow a moment of slower pace after that hot start to this period. I mean already uh, two goals. Yeah very much so. This is the weird part of the game as that is sent in by Gallagher, and on the blue line, a big hit by White Duck as Gallagher rips one right above the blocker, and what a shot! And ties this game up at three! Gallagher, what a shot! And just like that, it's tied. The Bulls come out with two unanswered goals after they fell behind. It's, it's tied up once again. Jack Gallagher getting it done. He had an effective season. He missed some time due to injury, but he had eight goals this season, 13 total points. And another effective offensive weapon. Three different goal scorers today for UB on different lines. Very interesting trend so far. Yeah, right now the refs are meeting at center ice. I wonder if they're, I don't know what that meeting could be about. Looked like a clean goal to me. I don't know if, I don't know if one ref saw something. I don't know. But speaking of Gallagher, he won the draw across now Griffin. Griffin gives it back over to Darina. And back up. It's taken and by Nadurf, and Nadurf is trying to get that up to Hansen, in which he will connect. Hansen skating in. He has Calhoun on the other side. Try to throw it in front for Calhoun, but a glove hand says otherwise. Krauser. We talked about the glove hand 
uh, of Koreyu. Krauser, I mean, that's a good glove save, too. See, this is a whole different game now because if I'm Buffalo, I just came back from a 3-1 to deficit, and they got all the momentum now. So if Buffalo can pull this and pull one ahead, the tides will be completely turned. Buffalo definitely getting some momentum there. And it seems to be working as it's dumped in and a Durf will glove it down. The Durf getting followed by Cody. And he'll have to chip it up to Aherns who tries to get it stick down was north but couldn't get that down completely. As a battle and Susan, a big hit by Schmidl right in front of the Canisius bench. And we, that Canisius bench erupted in a lot of dismay. Puck goes down. Cody's trying to race it. And Schwartz following him. Cody and Schwartz going after it. Aleto joining in, along with Reed on the 2v2 board battle. They get set puck sent around the boards to the other side. Schmidl drives it back. Aleto back around. Schmidl try to throw it in front for Cody. And Tregilio will have to go after it. And it gets sent and now intercepted. And back the other way, there's no goal. He's setting a goal. Man, oh man, Okolovic makes it 4-3, Canisius. And unfortunately, Krautzer was not set. I don't know if he realized Okolave was there. Yeah, laps there for uh, the young goaltender, Gavin Krautzer. Unfortunate goal. Certainly one that you want back against a tough team. You can't necessarily be giving Canisius uh, opportunities like that. And, uh, you know, the Bulls took a risk by, by going with the young goaltender. He's shown a lot of promise, obviously, in his in his uh, first season with the team, but uh, you might see some growing pains. As Shalomov was knocked off the puck, and Yurkovsky gives it over to Namol, and Namol now around the defense. Namol throwing it in front. They score! Namol! His second of the night! Namol makes it a 5-3 lead for Canisius. This game is something else. Now two unanswered goals in quick succession for Canisius. That is the third straight uh, two goal run in this game. Canisius scored two unanswered, then the Bulls had two, and then here's two again for Canisius. Now a 5 3 game. I'm losing track of how many goals have been in this second period. <laughs> We're only seven minutes in. It's unbelievable. And it's back and forth hockey. It was back and forth defensively in the first. Now here in the second, it's back and forth offensively. So now Reed and Peterson will take the face off at center ice, and we will see who scores next, if you will. Bowen gives it over to Okolovich, and that is over to North now. One-on-one, -on -one. North with a shot blocked by the defender in front. It was Griffin who blocked it, and that one now goes to the corner. Belinsky trying to get it up. Peterson there on the boards. Belinsky there to follow right there. Okolovsky gives it over now. Reed. Reed on the red line. Back ends it in. Off the boards. And sitting a man down was Reed. A weird collision. I don't know if anyone was tangled up with each other. As North is trying to poke that puck free. Quickly taken and backhanded by White Duck all the way down. Griffin will go after it for the Ice Bulls. Well, folks, we are just seven minutes into this second period of play, and it's been offensively free for both sides. It's a quick shot by Peterson's a glove save made. And a, here we go again. How about a little, little hug? By and, White Duck, huh? and, and that one was broken up uh, pretty quickly. I think UB especially is like, we're not taking another penalty, not down by two goals. You know, they had just had a good look. Ryan Peterson with the shot. He led the Bulls with 19 goals this regular season. They're not out of this game. I mean, we're going to see, I think, a lot more goals. Already been five in this second period, like you said, just seven minutes in. So I think just staying composed, not getting ahead of yourselves, staying out of the penalty box for both of these teams is going to be important. That puck goes to the corner in which Zach Reen will take possession, trying to get up to Hansen. Quick stamped on the blue line, but it gets sent back out, and Buffalo has to reset. McGuire with it. Sent over. And back behind the Canisius net as White Duck is there on the corner. Back towards the blue line here. Everybody trying to poke for it. That gets sent back by Cody all the way down, and White Duck will go after it off the boards. White Duck over to Calhoun. Calhoun across, Mitt to connect with Zach Reen, but he'll get it off the boards. Zach Reen has Hansen breaking with him. Tried to throw it for Hansen, but a white uniform blocked it, and that gets chipped to the blue up. Aleto with it. In the offensive zone. Aleto. Aleto trying to 
thrown on, and I think we have a penalty. I didn't even see the arm raised on the far side because it was the furthest referee, but we do have a penalty. And if you are Buffalo, this is a good opportunity, folks. Yeah, this is the Bulls' first power play of the game, and we've seen how effective it's been on the other side. Down two goals, this is the situation you want to be in. And I would just like to draw our viewers' attention to the fact that shots are currently 20 to 18 in favor of Canisius with 12 minutes to play in period two. So that is an astounding total. Daniel Zach Green didn't even know he had a penalty. He didn't know he was the one that had the penalty. He was going right to the bench. <laughs> you like to see it sometimes, folks. Belinsky down low, connects now Peterson. Back up top, it is Kelly who sends it over to Peterson. Who now over to Griffin. Griffin, Peterson. Peterson with a shot blocked in front. Aletto will have to go after it in the corner. Aletto around. Now back with it is Belinsky down low. Peterson. Peterson, top of the blue line, Belinsky. Belinsky, down low, Peterson. Peterson, back up top. Griffin with a ripper, and that one goes high. Griffin intercepts that send out, trying to nudge it further down, oh. and he sent a man down, and oh, you don't like to see it, folks. Penalty in the offensive zone for UB on the power play. Oh, Yurikovsky will take it. Kanishas pulled their goaltender. Delayed penalty, Buffalo, and it gets touched up by Peterson, and Griffin giving some pushing and shoving to French. French and Peterson, or sorry, that's French. That's not Peterson. That's, not, that's French and Griffin who are giving the talking to. As we will now have four on four for about a minute and 11. That's a crucial mistake for the Bulls to take a tripping penalty while you're on the power play, while you had the puck in the offensive zone. Really yeah. an unfortunate error for them. Cannot happen. And uh, neutralizing their power play while they're already behind by two goals. Big mistake. Now Griffin in the box. Ooh, a unique, unique second period to say the least, wouldn't you, Ryan? It's definitely completely different than the first. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. It's a, a very different type of game. We've seen a lot more action on both ends in this second period, and it's not even halfway through. As now that puck goes around, Ahearns will go after it. Ahearns trying to get around. Douglas is pinning him in the boards. About 55 now remaining on this four-on-four. Four. Down low to Durf. Was trying to get that puck free, but instead it gets pushed to the boards. Ahern's across. Schwartz around the defender. Schwartz again around, but he couldn't get around the second white uni. And as Reed trying to send it down even further, Reed now over. Nadurf Reed. Reed around the defender. Reed around two of them. Backhand. Oh, it went off the arm. Crowd That That's a good save. Backhand by Nadurf is quickly chipped out. Nadurf couldn't fully block it down. And back the other way. Schmidl. Douglas connect in front, but unable to get into the back of the net. Back the other way, Reed. Diving there, trying to get a poke on it was Dorenda. And that is a quick shot that goes wide by Ahearns. Bounced off the boards. Back the other way, Douglas. Big collision between Douglas and White Duck. And the crowd erupts because we didn't see an arm raised. A lot of them giving those good... Ice, open ice hits as now Zach Green skates in, throw it in front, and Hansen missed the shot. North came flying in like a North Star, but he wasn't able to connect with the puck. Sent out quickly. Zagolowski. Now White Duck will send it over. Dave Pendrina will try to get it over. And now Zagolowski will send it back the other way. A little back and forth we go. Quickly stepped there behind the net. Kanisha's trying to reset here. They are on a power play for just about 10 seconds remaining on such situation. Trying to get that one last shot on, if you will, and that will not happen as Zajac is the one that sent Hansen down, and the penalty concludes. We're back to five on five hockey, folks. Ogolovsky will send it up to Yurikovsky. Yurikovsky trying to throw it in front. Neymol has two goals this afternoon. Chipped in front. Yurikovsky going back after it. Left inside corner. Yurikovsky trying to go up to Rivet. But he wasn't set. Cody is trying to get it past Bowen. And oh, Cody just sinned. Cody just collided with Kareyu. And the Kanishas faithful definitely did not like to see that one. Yurikovsky will go after it in the corner. Puck gets rifled around. 
taken and sent across by Hansen. Connect is, Schwar is Schwartz and it quickly down. As now Duranda will send it up and it's quickly corralled by Kanisha as Aherns takes possession. Bounced off the boards. Nadurf has options. Quick shot blocked in front. Back in around by Cody. North and Griffin, the ones battling now in the corner. Puck free. Reed takes it. Down over. Nadurf. Now North. Up front blocker save made by a by uh, on Aherns as Aherns now takes back possession on the blue line. Aherns over to Schwartz. Schwartz now looking for options. Sends it back up top of the blue line. Thrown towards the center, but Aherns couldn't connect. He was the only Canisius player that could. Canisius trying to every single angle of pressure. North behind the goal here with Aherns trying to send it free while Buffalo's trying to get something going. His white duck trying to rifle one. It's an open on the other side. North was on a knee, and he couldn't get it to the opening gaping net. Reed going to the other side. Quick shot wide. North looking top of the blue line. He Pedrina. Across, White Duck. White Duck down low, gives it over to Reed. Reed trying to throw it in front. Nobody there in a blue uniform. Instead, it's White. Cody with it. Cody will skate in. Send it into the offensive zone right on goal. And covered for the whistle. Much needed whistle and a much needed offensive zone faceoff for UB. They were under a lot of pressure down on the other end. They had trouble clearing the puck and taking possession back. So a little, that's a nice tactful play there by the Bulls, just dump it on net, force the goaltender to cover it up, get a line change, and we can reset with 7.04 in the second period. As the faceoff that was to the left of the Canisius goal is now behind it, and it goes into the corner. Reichel trying to get that up to Helgenberger, but instead it's Hansen there for Canisius, and that gets sent behind. Touched up, and an arm is raised in holding the call in which Buffalo goes back to the penalty box. And I think this is becoming the story of the game, or, or at least one of the major trends in this game, is the Bulls continuing to take penalties. The two power play goals that Canisius has scored, right now the difference in this game. And uh, once again, it's Foresta heading to the box for UB. Yeah, he just showed some frustration. Foresta uh, doesn't have his stick in his hand. It's actually on the ground. I think he might have actually picked it up, but he threw it on the ground when he first got in the penalty box. Definitely showing frustration. His second penalty on him today. And another power play for Canisius, but this one gets sent the length of the ice. And trying to beat him there is Dovkin, and he does, and he sends around. If you're Buffalo, you need to kill this now. And they're adding enough pressure to where it could be the great opportunity. Gallagher penned in the boards. Puck free, arm raised. And a penalty coming up, holding the call. White Duck doesn't like it, but guess what? The ref called it. And now we're going to go back to 4 on 4 for the second time. <laughs> yeah, we've seen uh, quite a bit of 4 on 4 action in this game. It, it's basically the reverse of the last time when UB had the power play. They took a, a pretty poor penalty early on, and that completely shut it down. This time it's Kanisha shooting themselves in the foot and uh, sending one of their own to the penalty box. So it'll be, eventually, it'll be 21 seconds of a UB power play once this four on four runs its course. Well, Aleto will take the face off against Rivet. Aleto and Rivet face off to the right of the Canisius goal. Trigilio with a shot is sticked by Aleto but couldn't get it to go on the back of the twine. Send up front, Peterson stopped on a dime and the puck goes wide. And now Canisius trying to get that puck out. Bowen got Tripped through the puck, and Aleto now skating in. Aleto looking, stick handle back in, he scores! Aleto makes it a one goal game. Really nifty handle there, getting to the backhand at the absolute last second. I wasn't sure if he had enough space to pull that move off, but he did and got to the backhand, beat the goaltender. A four on four goal for UB. And uh, back to a one-goal game here. I mean, the fireworks in the second period just keep going off. Well, if you are listening in as a, a fan of either side, I can only imagine what your thoughts are for the third period. But we have six minutes to go in the second as Gallagher with a shot, rebound, and he couldn't connect. Arm is raised, a penalty coming up for Canisius. And so Buffalo will go on the power play for four-on-three power play. 
which is going to be very a lot more open ice. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. And in the open ice so far, this these last uh, the last minute or so has really generated some some interesting chances for the Bulls. Um, and you know, the, just the momentum swings in this game have been unbelievable. We've seen just back to back to back uh, teams answering each other. Um, six goals here in this second period so far. Still five minutes and 49 seconds to go. We have um, a four on three, which is going to be very interesting. And it will eventually morph into a five on three for a very brief period of time. Leto now with it on top of the blue line. Leto. He got the goal to make it a one goal game. Peterson back to Leto. Leto back to Peterson. Peterson back to Leto. Back and forth they go. Blocked in front. And Reed sends it the length of the ice. Griffin will take possession. As Aleto and Peterson trailing with him. He'll send it around. Up in the corner. And that was a hold. We didn't state that earlier. It was a hold against Schwartz. Believe me. No, tripping, I'm sorry. Schwartz with the trip. And it was Fiesta with the hold. That's right. So now. Buffalo looking to tie this game up. They have a lot of time on this four on three. You can do whatever they want as a shot is blockered away and pushed to the corner. Peterson up top, Griffin. Griffin, Peterson, Peterson trying to get it over to Aletto and that will go down. Five on three for the Bulls, 20 seconds. 20 seconds of a five on three. 20 seconds in hockey is like 20 minutes in real life. Aletto down low, back in on goal, but a save made, what a save. What a save. <laughs> That's one of the plays of the game so far in my mind to keep Canisius in front. The Bulls knocking on the door with a five on three for the next 13 seconds. And then another 36 seconds after that of a regular power play for UB. But right now, Canisius holding on to a one goal lead thanks to a fantastic play from their goaltender. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. Back and forth hockey all night tonight as this five on this four on three will can or five on three will conclude, and we will now go on five on four. As that gets sent down, 33 seconds of a five on four power play for Buff. As Kelly can't get that up, French sends it down even further to Ahern's. Gets sent back up by Creer and blocked away. Belinsky skates in. Belinsky trying to go right to the goal, throw it in front. Aleto with it. Aleto. Stick it on, threw it on, going a save made by Correu. Pushed up front, Trigilio with a shot. Rebound, Aleo. Aleto robbed in, oh, I think. The helmet, yes, the helmet came off of Correu. He's been flying across that crease throughout this penalty kill for Canisius, diving left and right, making saves, and I think that time, uh, he dove across and his helmet became dislodged. He might have even hit himself on the post because the net was also uh, off its mooring. So two seconds on this on this penalty against Schwartz of Canisius. He'll come out basically as soon as the puck is dropped. And um, an effective last couple of minutes for UB to get this back to a one-goal game. They have the shot advantage, 23-22. to 22. It's going to be very interesting to see who finishes this period with the upper hand. As the penalty has concluded, we're back to five on five. Sending a man down, Reichel, trying to get that puck up the boards, and sent back around by Sekolowski. Love down, McGuy will send it back behind. Gallagher with a poke. Career trying to get that going, and a good hit there by Zajac. As that one goes down, and Kadishis will go for a line change instead of following it. And so Buffalo will have possession. Sekolowski trying to throw it at front. Rivet takes possession. Rivet now for Canisius trying to skate in. Sekolowski, good hit there on Rivet. And now that puck in the opposite corner. Yurkovsky, going to keep that puck down. Rivet joins in this battle. Sekolowski will send it around. Ogilovic will try to get a shot on, but it gets sent back down the other way. Arm raised. And icing called. Bowen doesn't even touch it. I'll just turn around. So we've now entered the late stages of the second period at 2.42 on the clock. The shot column, 23-22 in favor of Buffalo. And a 5-4 lead for Canisius. And it's interesting to me, too, because the first and second period really couldn't have been more different in terms of the way they turned out. 
yet we're in a similar spot. In the waning moments of the period, it's still a one-goal Canisius lead. Both teams are playing extremely well. The shot total is close. So despite all the action we've seen in the second period, we're returning to that point of equilibrium. And I think we're going to need at least 20 more minutes of hockey to determine who is going to move on to play Oswego tomorrow afternoon. As that one went right into the stands. And I believe a lucky fan will go down there and retrieve it. As now that face-off will be to the left of the Buffalo goal. North will take the face-off for Kadishis against, as that one was won by Shelomov. Or buff, but that is north in the corner for Kadishis who had it. Puck is chipped around the boards in the corner. Dovkin trying to throw it in front. And Shalomov with it across Griffin. Griffin connects the other side. Trying to throw it in towards the goal was Douglas. Board battle ensues right behind the Canisius goal. Puck goes raffling around. Opposite corner. Nudged off the puck there. And North now gets it across to Ahearns. Ahearns will skate in. Sit in the offensive zone. Reed. Pushing and shoving. Puck is free. Shalomov. Durana will get that free. Chipped up. Douglas. Now back with it. Nadurf. And Yurikovsky's going to try to get it. But Tregilio says, I'll try to send it up. But Nadurf takes it from him. And a weird shot from an absolute odd angle. I don't even know why he ripped that one. It went off the side of the net. Very weird option. Shalomov will get that one going all the way back down further. And White Duck will take possession for Canisius. Sideboards just in front of the penalty boxes. Yurikovsky as that one goes right out of play into his own bench. And a stoppage of play. A neutralized faceoff just in front of the penalty boxes. Now we're getting to that late part of the period where both teams are kind of just like a little tired. have been playing a whole period of hockey. So now you're just trying to get out of it with no damage. Trigilio just got absolutely hit by Yurikovsky for some reason. The puck is stuck behind the net and now a little pushing and shoving oh they're just giving each other hugs that's all it is oh yeah friendly competition oh yeah friendly competition and you know I'll be honest I was expecting even a little bit more animosity between these two teams I mean yes we've seen penalties we've seen pushing and shoving but I think both teams realize that this the moment is bigger than any uh, you know any desire they might have to uh, knock somebody's head off, if, if you will. So, yes, you're seeing some tension and, and, and some after the whistle um, pushing and shoving from these two teams. But at the end of the day, this has been a relatively clean hockey game, and I'm happy to see that. Draw one. Ibadrina will get across to White Duck. And Zach Green trying to nudge it forward. Something there is Hanson as he tried to throw it across. Nobody in a dark blue uniform could get a pick, get a, get a stick on his day. Padrina threw a shot on. And right to the glove hand and hold it for the whistle. And I like that. Crutzer getting the glove on it nice and firm, stopping the play. That's got to be a bit of a confidence booster for him because he's had some trouble with the loose pucks and the rebounds. So, you know, controlling the play, shutting it down, getting a firm grip on that, on that puck is got to be an effective uh, way for him to to stay in his groove. As this faceoff will be to the left of the Buffalo goal. And if you are Buffalo with 48.1 to go in the second, you want to get out of this at least down just one like you did in the first. As that one goes around, Reed backhands it to Ahearns, who sends it back even further behind the net north. It's stopped up and now into the other corner. North in front. Reed with a ripper. It's blocked in front. I believe that was Begay who got that block, and now that puck is just bouncing every which way. Eventually, it's pushed out. Aleu, Aleda, Aleto. Well, Aleto will go down. Cody there, nudged in the corner, thrown in front, and Reed will take possession. Reed realizes there's three seconds left in the second period and says, "Just pen it," and which he will, and that will just trickle out like a little bouncy ball. And we are 40 minutes in the books. Well, 40 minutes done. The shot column is in favor of Canisius just by one, 24 to 23. And they're also up by one. But once again, the first period, they were also up by one after the first. 
But I'll tell you what, it's back and forth hockey. First period was a defensive game, second period was offensive. I can only imagine what the third period is. Yeah, hopefully the third period is, is just as intense and entertaining as this game has been so far. I'm getting flashbacks to last year's final. Again, between these two teams, it was down to the wire, multiple ties, multiple lead changes. I mean, it really came down to the final minutes in that championship game last year to decide who would take home the Memorial Cup. And I think today's semifinal game will be much the same. Again, Canisius looking for some revenge for that loss last season. And, um, you know, so far throughout this game, in my opinion, penalties have been and will continue to be the factor that dictates the momentum. Because when these teams, either of them, have a power play, it is difficult to stop these offenses. So, you know, the goaltenders and the defensemen can do and play as well as they want. But if you're giving up multiple power play opportunities, it's going to be difficult to beat the other opponent for both of these teams. So we'll see how the third period goes. John, you have any thoughts? Yeah, well, the Bulls were able to bring it into a one-goal game while the score reflects 5-4. They're playing sloppy. That second period is not what coaches really want to see. And Canisius, they got to keep playing their game. They're doing a really good job pestering the Bulls. They're getting mad. But if the Bulls were able to put something together in the final period and maybe make a comeback, it's great for them. But Canisius just got a lockdown in the third period. Well, I think I can speak for both of you in the aspect of we have no clue what this third period is going to be like, but I can only imagine what it will be. Well, we just have about 15 minutes until the last 20 minutes of regulation. Who knows who will play Oswego? We surely don't know. It's anything could happen. We'll see you in about 14.
But as we get set now, the third period of play, 20 minutes remaining in regulation. I have to say regulation because it's a one-goal game. Anything can happen in the sport of hockey. And Canisius is the one up 5-4, but they are not on the ice. Buffalo is. As the horn sounds, I don't know where Canisius is. There they are. A little bit of a walk. Yeah, it's interesting that the locker rooms are on the same side, or at least the teams are coming from the same tunnel, and then when Canisius takes the ice, they have to skate all the way across to their bench. It's a little interesting. Yeah, the D3 team, and of course this bench in front of us is actually the home bench when D3 is playing, and then their locker room is just to the left of you, that little uh, where the perch is. It's a, a below the perch. It's, it's a weird, weird way. It's a long walk either way. Um, weird rule, a weird, weird building setup. Of course, this is just built like the 1970s with the benches on either end. Kind of like a football field. Right. Opposite sidelines. We talked a little bit about that pregame, how that changes the dynamic. You'd think it would give uh, Canisius, or the home team, uh, normally in this arena, uh, Canisius is using the home bench tonight. But they, since the penalty box is on that side, if you're trying to make a substitution out of the penalty box, it's much easier for that team. So far, it hasn't really proven to be uh, much of a factor in this one goal game, though. Ahearns will try to get a shot on. As Tregilio was the one that deflected it away, and it gets sent all the way down. The length of the ice, and arm raises, and quickly an icing, and back the other way we go. Yeah, that was quick, first whistle. Uh, I think last period we had a goal within about 20 seconds or so. The, this period, uh, you never know, but it seems to be off to a bit of a different start. The way this game is going, I can only imagine what we will see here. Reed won that draw technically, but Tregilio is the one that... Sent it the other way. Ward battle ensues. Hagelberger and Peterson battling it for Buffalo. Reed touches it and a high stick the call. So another stoppage of play. <laughs> I know, another whistle. Two whistles in the first 24 seconds of this third period. Um, I think we almost had two goals in that time. In the, I'm exaggerating, but that second period got off to quite the <laughs> fast start. We saw six total goals in period number two, which brings us to the 5-4 total. Well, we will see what happens here in the third, if we can get it going, if you will, as it goes off of Peterson's stick. And around the boards it goes. Bowen was there for it, but instead able to keep it in there in a white uniform was Kelly for a second, but it gets chipped up and out the other way. Tregilio with it. Buffalo, they need a goal to tie it. They're definitely not out of this game. As the Durf has it, Kelly trying to throw his stick down on it. As Belinsky's there, trying to get it down now. Kelly trying to leave it for Belinsky. But now Nadurf gets it up, poked forward. And now Ahern, he has Calhoun with him. Ahern throwing in front, save made. As Belinsky now has it. Thrown across off the boards. As Aletto around now in front. Aletto shot, save made. Nobody there in a white uniform could connect. There was a gaping side. Off the net that a white uniform could have put it in the back, but nobody on buff was there. Schwartz across, and a Durf trying to get it up to Calhoun. And if you are Canisius, you start worrying because Buffalo's coming out here with fury in the last 20 minutes of regulation as Zach Green will go after it. Zach Green. Now Hansen trying to get that puck free. Nudged off of it. And Aletto will skate with it. As Hansen's the one harassing him from behind. A good hit there by Zach Green. Arm raised, penalty called, obviously. Can't really do that in the sport of hockey, unfortunately, when the ref is right there calling it. And for the second time tonight, Zach Green's in the penalty box. Yeah, and this, again, UB has really not had a ton of power play opportunities, really just one sustained power play opportunity, which came in the latter half of period number two. So... Good opportunity there, again, down a goal. This is really right where you want to be. I think whoever scores the next goal will have uh, substantial momentum moving towards the end of this game. Polinski across. Aletto with a shot. Blocked there in front. As De Padrina sends it the length of the ice and already 10 seconds got on the power play. Buffalo, this is an early power play. This is a great opportunity. Griffin behind the ice. Bulls net. They need a goal to tie this. Aletto now with it. In the offensive zone, stopped on a dime. Chips it in, Peterson there. Correu sends it around. Back up top, Aletto. Shot on the goal, save made covered. And a little push it and shove it afterwards. Kelly and White Duck are the ones going. And 
White Duck is going to be kind of separated by his own teammate to be yeah. like, hey, don't do that. Broken up very quickly again. Of all these after-the-whistle scrums, they really have not been lasting very long. You know, these two teams, they're going to mix it up. They're going to potentially try and um, instigate the other team, but I think the officials are doing a good job keeping things tight, and the players themselves know it's not worth it to, to take a dumb penalty after the whistle. Puck up top of the blue line. Griffin with a shot. It's blocked in front. It was in within the equipment and dumped all the way down. And back now. Aleto will send it around. Trying to chip it out. And now stopped on top of the blue line. Aleto, the goaltender, is definitely not setting a goal. And they'll score on the power play. A gaping net. And a tied hockey game. And it is definitely not over. Yeah, huge goal, of course. Uh, Two unanswered for UB to tie the game. And in the previous period, you saw a similar situation with Krutzer. He came out of the net to play the puck and, and kind of never really got reset, allowing the Griffins to score a goal. That time, the other way around, Chireo came out of his net. The Bulls had the power play. They had numbers. And the pressure forced him out of position. And Aleto with a nice shot up high over the sprawling goaltender of Canisius to tie the game. White Duck saucers it over. Try to connect with North. But that will definitely not go his way. Puck, though, gets critted to Reed. Reed trying to split the D. Now to the boards. Raffled around. Ahern getting trailed by Sekolowski. And which Sekolowski will send it around. North able to gain back possession of it. Still in the same corner. Chip it over to the blue line. White Duck will rifle a weird slapper completely wide. Now in front. Reed with a back end from Ahern. Can't get that shot on. Uh, now quickly, North couldn't connect. Top of the blue line. Drozki, whose shot is blocked. I think that went off the right hand of McKay. Look to see it be in some discomfort. Dovkin got a little stick out of it to push it in the opposite corner. But now, Okolovic backhands it. Douglas knocked off. Reed with possession. Kanisha's trying to find a way to respond here. Reed skating in, splits two of them, splits three of them, technically gets sent down. The Canisius bench wants a call. They're not definitely going to get one, and the Durf will have to go after it with Schwartz following suit. The Durf sends it up. Oh, off the top of the glass and somehow stays in. Now behind the Buffalo goal, kept in by Namel, who has two of the five Canisius goals this afternoon. Back up top of the blue line. Quick riffler by Nadurf is rappled around. Schwartz sends up. Neymar will send it in as he gets trailed by Helgenberger. And pinned in the boards there by Trigilo. Trigilio. Peterson and Trigilio will battle for it. And Peterson knocked him down and touched it up and tripping the call. And Peterson well, why the frustration of Peterson, he just threw a stick in the box. And he knows that, you know, that was the right call. He clearly tripped him there. And, you know, just uh, another unforced error for UB. Um, they had the momentum after tying this game on the power play. Now they're sending their opponent to the power play, a, a, a area of this game that Canisius has had a lot of success. And, uh, again, I think whoever scores next will either shift the momentum back their way or continue riding the wave. Faceoff is... Technically won by, I'll give it to Buffalo, but Canisius keeps it in. Schwartz will send it down low to North, but North gets pushed away from it. Namol says, I'll get it, and sends it up to Schwartz. Schwartz, behind now, North behind the goal, looking up, has Ahearns, who said, I'll take a slapper, but he said no. North will leave it down for Ahearns. Ahearns down the corner. Ahearns trying to throw it in front for Reed. Reed now gains back possession. Trickles back to the blue line. Schwartz up top of the blue line. Across now north. North. Shot. Save made. And it goes right in off the save and into the back of the net. And Canisius regains the lead. And who else? I believe so. It will be Namu. Yeah, Namu leading that celebration. That would be three for him. That's a Hattie. And another power play goal. I feel like a broken record for Canisius. And another goal in a similar fashion, working the puck down low, throwing it in front for deflections and one-time chip-ins. That strategy has worked over and over again for these Golden Griffins, especially on the power play. And they're back in front. But, again, we talked about how 
contentious and back and forth this game has been so far. It's only continuing here in this last period. Behind the crease. Canisius regaining the lead, trying to add more pressure as that shot goes right on the goal, and it gets pushed right to Sagalowski, who Sagalowski is trying to get it up. And he will. He'll get it up to Gallagher. Gallagher gets nudged off the puck. He regains it back. Threw it in front, but unable to connect with any white uniform. Instead, it's taken now by Zach Green, who bounces it up. Hansen was there, but couldn't connect. And that goes all the way down for an icing now. Just 14.08 to go in the third. And as that clock ticks down, you start realizing how much you want it. It's going to be a fight for it. Yeah, that's a great point. I don't think either of these teams have really worried too much about the clock throughout this game just because of the the fast pace and, and the high scoring. It, you know, it, throughout most of this game, it, it, time never really felt like a factor. Um, but it is starting to become one. 14 minutes left in the game. One of these two teams is going home for good. And the other will advance to the NECHL championship game. 14 minutes to decide, at least in regulation. Knocked down. One of these teams will head back to the city of Buffalo, whilst the other spends another night in the city of Oswego. Puck along the boards right in front of the Canisius bench. It's sent back across and chipped up quickly back the other way. Trying to knock it down there was Bowen, but instead Aleto is right there, thrown in front, and Zajac couldn't get a shot on. Puck now on the other side. Down low, Schmittle. Schmittle, stick handle, threw it in front. Nobody could get a stick on it in a white uniform. Helgenberger gets knocked down. Penalty coming up on Canisius. Buffalo trying to tie this game back up. Puck gets over. Now here's Trigilio. Trigilio down low. Buff pulled their goaltender. Six on five. Delayed penalty on Canisius. Puck trickled off trying to get there in time. And will get there in time is Cody. But touching it up finally is Reed. And the whistle will blow. And another power play. Another opportunity to tie this game. I mean the penalties for both sides. They just got to be so frustrating. Because Canisius you know, with the lead. Having control of the game. And then you take a penalty to give Buffalo a great chance to tie it once again and it just th this game has played out like this throughout just neither team has really been able to expand their advantage neither team has really taken full control of this game I mean Canisius has led multiple times but they cannot put the Bulls away at least not yet Belinsky now has it he'll send it down low Peterson Peterson back to Belinsky Belinsky looking for options you saw Aleto, Aleto try to call for it, but Polinski will go for the safe route and try to send it down low to Peterson behind the net. Peterson now has the race for it. He gets pinned in the boards. Board battle ensues. Puck free. Knocked down. No arm raised. The Bulls wanted one. They won't get one. Trying to get it going. and Oh, my gosh. Kinesis is just kind of playing it rough here offensively, and it's kind of worked as that one goes all the way down. Aleto will take possession. Minute and a half to go on this power play. Across to Peterson. Peterson back across. Aleto skating in. Rifles it around. Belinsky over Peterson. Peterson shot blocked in front by White Duck. And an arm is raised and a cross check to call. Canisius is in a lot of dismay because a five on three power play for Buffalo for a minute and 14. And we saw Buffalo, they had a very uh, short five on three earlier in this game. But, you know, who doesn't love being in that situation? And now is the time when you need one. 12 minutes and 20 seconds left in this game. They're going to have a minute and 14 of a five on three. Down a goal. Winner go home. Face up to the right of the Canisius goal. If you are Buffalo, this is a key moment right now to try to tie this game back up. Cody down low. He'll connect with Dovgin. Dovgin looking for options. Sends it down low. Okay, right hole. Give it over to Cody. Cody back over. Douglas throw it into the blue line. A quick shot by Trigilio is not going to go his way. And a save made. It goes back down. 50 to go on the five on three. Cody will take possession. Cody. Around one of them. He went around Reed. He skates in. Rival a shot. Save made. He tried to go get his own rebound. But instead he gets the door closed in front of him. And the whistle blows. Yeah, Cureo made the initial save. And the puck was kind of dribbling right in front of him. But before Cody could get his, his stick on it. And he was coming in with a lot of speed. But Correo was able to corral that rebound and not allow the second chance. Still the offensive zone faceoff for the Bulls with two men advantage. Well, Peterson will win this draw. Aleto will take possession. Give it back across. Back to Aleto from Griffin. Now back over to Griffin. Griffin looking. Sends it down low. Peterson. Peterson back to Griffin. 
Griffin looking down low, try to connect with Belinsky. It's a bouncing puck. Aleto down low. Stick handle Peterson trying to throw it to Kelly. Went off Aleto's skate and it goes down with 15 to go on the five on three. And the Kanisha's bench is kind of erupting. And uh, some excitement as now Kelly skates in over now Peterson trying to throw it back to Kelly. It was actually Aleto who tried to throw it back to Kelly and that one goes back down. And so the five on three concludes. We're back to five on four, 445. Puck across from Griffin now to Peterson. Peterson. Comes it across, connects with Griffin. 35 to go on the power play. Griffin looking for options. Over to Belinsky. Belinsky looking down low. Connects with Kelly. Kelly circles, looks. Aleto, 20 seconds. Aleto throw it on the side. It went off the side of the net. Belinsky trying to throw it in front for Kelly. And it gets dumped down. And getting rifled right back from the goaltender to Aleto. And he says, keep going. Aleto trying to chip it up and towards the stick of Belinsky. But Aleto keeps it in. Two seconds and one. The penalty concludes. We're back to five on five. And now intercepted. Back the other way comes Kanishas. Skating now is Yurkovsky. Yurkovsky on the corner. And there's an arm raise. Delayed penalty coming up on Buff. You hate to see it. You were just on a five on three. And now you're going to have to go on a penalty kill. Once the whistle blows, White Duck across to Schwartz. Schwartz holding now. We're halfway through. And that goes wide. We are officially halfway through the third period. And man, oh man, is Buff frustrated after that one. I, I Completely. And going back to that five on three, I mean, what a huge kill by Canisius. They put themselves in a tough spot with a one goal lead, you know, hanging by a thread there. A sustained five on three for Buffalo results in nothing. Canisius gets a huge kill. I'm sure that lit up their bench with energy. And then going right after that, going on to the power play, huge momentum shift here. And uh, I think Canisius is feeling really good about the situation they're in halfway through the final period of play. Well, Schwartz will take it on the blue line, try to center himself, but he gets knocked free from him. And now getting chased down by Dovkin as North sends it rifling around. Trying to pin it in the boards here, but it ain't going to happen. It's up top to Ahern. A minute and 35. Ahern trying to throw it across in front. Nobody in a dark blue uniform to put the stick at it. Now down low, it's Neymar. Neymar, three goals tonight. Has a hat trick. Down low, north. Go behind. The throw it in front, and Reed was there to go on it, but then quickly covered. And a whistle is blown for another stoppage. And UB, I mean, I think it goes without saying that getting the kill here is crucial with 9.14 left to go in this game. But, you know, for UB, I think you also have to have in your mind getting that next goal yourself. So there's two things at play here, not only keeping the defense tight, but remembering that you are down and this game is closer to being done than, than to starting. As that shot is... Shovered away to the far corner. As now Nadurf circles around. Nadurf shot. Goes off the arm and to the same corner of which he came out of. Nadurf back with it. Across 50 seconds to go on this power play. And the trickling puck gets blocked. And White Duck trying to send it back down. De Pedrina now up top White Duck. White Duck shot. Glove save made and hold it for the whistle. Nice save by Kratzer, the glove again. And, you know, I think he's definitely settled in a little bit more as this game has gone on. He had a rough start to that second period, and the Bulls fell behind. Um, and, you know, this Canisius offense is, is very effective. Both teams have effective offenses. So I think Kratzer has, has shown um, really great um, composure and, and just confidence later in this game and, um, you know, keeping it close for UB. As Name Mool now has it. They'll send it up to Schwartz. They got 30 seconds to possibly extend their lead. Neymar across Ahern's. Ahern spins. Ahern's looking. Threw it across. North got the connection, but North couldn't put in the back of the net. Schwartz across. Back north. North now Schwartz. 10 seconds to go now. Down low, Neymar. Neymar across. Ahern's couldn't connect. He went off the tip of his stick. And two and one, we have back to five on five. McGuy will come back out. Trying to lay a hit on Reed, actually, when he came right out of that penalty box. And now it goes off. 
Hey, her now north. North, trying to connect with Reed. There's a gaping net. He shoots. He scores. Reed erupts the Canisius. Fateful, who sit just in front and extend the lead to two. And a massive goal. Yes, UB was able to kill the power play, but that was really an extension of the power play, that goal there, because the sustained zone pressure, the Bulls were tired. Canisius had a player streaking back door. Matt Aletto almost made a great play to stop that centering pass, but the goal scorer, Reed, the top goal scorer for this Canisius team by a wide margin, 20 goals in the regular season in 28 games, and that's arguably the biggest goal of the season for these Griffins, taking a two goal lead with eight minutes to play in the third period against their heated rivals. Puck around off the tip of the stick of Griffin. Now that pass, he was trying to lay it over, now taken by Rivet. Rivet, shot, he scores. Rivet makes it a three goal lead with 7.26 to go in the third. And these Canisius faithful you talked about, there's not many of them, but they are loud, and their bench is loud. They just took a three-goal lead, back-to-back -back goals. They have all the momentum in this game right now. This is the biggest lead that they've had all night. With seven and a half to go here in this third period, Canisius on the verge of exacting revenge for last year's final. Well, 7.26 to go in the third. You're down by three. It's the Acha, anything can happen. But now that clock is becoming the enemy of Buffalo. Well, a big hit there by Peterson. Definitely showing some frustration. Zach Green now gives it to Hansen. Hansen skates in, shot, scores. Hansen makes it 9-5. And this game is running away from the Bulls. One goal turned into two, turned into three, turned into a four goal lead. And three of them in rapid succession for the Griffins. They have sucked the energy out of the team in white. Well, the somewhat of, I would count, about 10 people, the Canisius faithful that have showed out behind the Canisius bench, definitely enjoying themselves. And the closest ref just called, and now we have a timeout for Buff. And a much needed timeout, if you will say. Trying to regroup. 7-11 to go. No, not the gas station. That's the clock time. 7-11 in the third period. A 9-5 lead for Canisius. Four amazing goals just consecutive. And they're starting to just carry this one away. Yeah, and especially that most recent run. Three goals in 90 seconds. And it's just, yes, you take a four-goal lead, which in and of itself is fantastic if you're Canisius. But... The way that they did it, continuing to score, building their lead, and you know, scoring before Buffalo even know what hit them. And I think that is why, of course, UB is taking the time out here. I mean, they just got hit with a couple of gut punches late in this game. And you know, it went from a close game all night, one goal game, all of a sudden, Canisius has complete control of the scoreboard. And it feels like it came out of nowhere if you're UB. So, um, It'll be very interesting to see how they respond here. I mean, obviously not the situation that they hoped they would be in. Well, Reed versus Aletto, and Reed is the one who takes that win at the center circle. Trying to glove it down there, but unable to, was the 23 of Helgenberger as that gets sent out. And speaking of which, Helgenberger tried to break it free. Now Reed pokes it forward. He has Ahern's on his far side, two on one. Reed skidding it back in. Ahern's can't get that shot to go in. And now Canisius, because of the four-goal lead, they're still playing aggressive, which is good to see as North takes in the corner. Sometimes teams will let off, and they are not laying off that gas. North in the corner. Now Ahern's trying to throw it to Reed. But it gets intercepted, and Schmidl just got knocked down, but no arm raised. Gets sent in by Helgenberger. White Duck gets nudged off the puck. Now Cody back over Helgenberger. Hogenberger, Cody, and Douglas, the three for Buffalo. Douglas gets that puck free. Douglas sends it up, connects with Shelomov, but he gets sent off the puck as he tried to send that down. And now White Duck takes possession and sends it across, connects with Creer. Creer trying to send it in, and he actually just absolutely gave a big hit to Reichel. And, uh, well, the ref right there says, nope, you cannot do that. 
So another stoppage. And if you're Buffalo, I mean, you can make this a three-goal game and have someone of some time to dig yourself out. But the clock is still not in your favor. That's the thing. It's not that four goals are insurmountable. I mean, obviously, we've seen 14 combined through uh, 54 minutes or 50, 54 minutes of play. Excuse me. So. It's really more a question of time. UB has the ability to score, but they have to start right now. Anderson wins the draw. Griffin now over Walensky. There's Career in the box, by the way, for Canisius. Peterson. Thrown over. Aletto couldn't connect. He has to go back for it. Aletto. We'll wrap it around. Big hit there. Walensky bounced right off the glass. He didn't even fall down. Back up from Peterson now. Walensky. Walensky. Walensky trying to get around the defense and regroup behind the net. Walensky has options. Sends it back down to Kelly, who's also behind the net. Kelly pokes it away from Bowen. Now Aletto. Back down. Kelly. Now Walensky. Now Peterson. Peterson. You got about a minute and nine to go on this power play. They need to find something. Aletto shot. Same made. Oh, there's a gaping side of the net as it gets sent back in front. But nobody in a white uniform could get that puck on the side. Pushing and shoving in the boards. The Canisius bench saying hold it. While Buffalo saying get it out of there. Belinsky trying to get that puck free, but it won't go his way. As Lukomsky is trying to skate his way as he gets sent down by Kelly. And now back the other way. A quick ripper by Aletto as a save made. Rebound. Peterson takes it. Sit across. Trying to poke it in the back of the net. And absolutely no way. What a save, and it's still free. No whistles blown. Quick shot, they score. They're saying yes, yes, the nearest ref says goal. And now it's 9-6. to six. It's a power play goal. Wow, I, the ref was like about to blow his whistle. I thought he was going to blow it dead, but he didn't. And Peterson scores. That was a wild sequence of events there. Kireo was sprawled out, and I thought they were going to blow that play dead. John. Yeah, I, I thought I heard a, I, I didn't think I heard a whistle. I was hoping for it at least for the sake of the goalie. That line was sprawled out all over the crease, but Bulls get one, and they cut it down to a three-goal lead. Well, it is been a unique night, and that basically sums it up, that sequence of events of how unique of a night it's been. It's now a three-goal lead with four and a half to go. If you're Buffalo, you're hoping for another penalty against Canisius for another opportunity on the power play. Uh, the refs are actually talking to the Canisius bench. I think Canisius is obviously saying, hey, weren't, didn't you blow the whistle? Yeah, the way Correo was sprawled out on, you know, on his stomach in the crease for an extended period of time, and, you know, I think most people were expecting that play to be blown dead, but I guess, you know, it's difficult to see. The, the puck must have been loose, and the official must have had an eye on it. Made its way out to Peterson, and he tucked it away for the Bulls' sixth goal of the night. Well, as the clock ticks, Buffalo realizes they need some goals, and they need them now. As White Duck takes it for Canisius and dumps it forward. Aletto trying to backhand it over. Schmidl gets it knocked off his stick, but Aletto takes possession. Cody and White Duck are like wrestling along the board, so no, so Cody couldn't connect. And now here's Hanson for Canisius into the offense. Oh, he's almost off sides. They are going to throw it off sides, but man, that was a real close one. Dumped in the corner. Trigilio, a possession, sends it across, and he connects with Schmidl. Zacharine just came oh. off the ice for Canisius. Looks like he's injured. And they blow a whistle. There's, I think, off sides. Yeah, Zacharine is. In a lot of discomfort. And they sit on the bench. We'll see what happens. I don't know they're rubbing his back. I wonder if the puck maybe hit him wrong. Looks like the wind got knocked out of him. I don't know exactly. But we'll see what happens with that 19 uni on the Canisius bench. Now, Neymar ships it over off the boards. It's taken by Kelly. Rips one, but a glove save made. And all of the whistle. So I'm interested to see three and a half minutes left in this game. Three goal game. At what point does UB say, what do we have to lose? Let's pull the goaltender and try and cut into this. Because at a certain point, you got to get a goal across. At least one or two goals to make this tight uh, for your opponent. So it's, it's really getting down to the end of this game. I think Kretzer's going to head to the bench sooner than later. Malinsky with that shot against save. When 
when TCNJ was playing RIT in that 2-1 win, RIT pulled their goalie with three and a half to go with a one goal deficit. It was very unique to see. And obviously Buffalo were less, just a little less than three and a half to go. And they have yet to pull their goaltender. So unless they're waiting to be pure domination of possession in the offensive zone, which now they have it, I'm looking over. If any opportunity approaches, I would assume Buffalo would pull that 10. Virgilio will take possession. Try to go behind his goal. I think he's trying to tell his tendy, hey, I need you to get out of your net. Over now, Griffin. Sends it over. Valensky will back in it. He's creeping on that blue paint. Keep an eye on him. As Nadurf try to send it, puck in the air. Glove down. Oh, oh, what a hit. Nadurf just leveled Belinsky. Looks like he ran into a brick wall. As a shot gets ripped by Schwartz. And now Reed trying to pin it in the boards. The clock is ticking down. Buffalo needs to know what they need to do. Get a goal. Kelly skating in. Trying to go around two of them. Trying to go around a third one. Kelly trying to throw it in front but couldn't connect with anybody in a white uniform. The lone man was pinned along with dark uniforms. And that one goes all the way down. Can't call an icing as North is the one there for Canisius. Trying to throw it in front. Went off of like three sticks. And now Gallagher has it. And backhanded out by Selisky and now taken by Alito and that Alito is knocked down and back over now Hanson Bull's net is empty and this Bull's could be it. net wide open Hanson with the backhand and it's completely wide Gallagher backhand not going to work Oh, trickled just wide clock's ticking here a minute and 50 need three goals and a minute and 50 let's see if they can do it anything happens in Acha trying to skate around one of them Getting around almost two of them. Aleto skating in. Aleto trying to throw it in front. Tipped. Glove down. Doretta connected with Cody. But that gets rifled down and into the net. Wow, that's about 180 some feet. That'll and Canisius do it. will definitely ice that one. Yep, that'll do it. A 10 goal performance for Canisius in a game that was closed through the first 50 minutes. They pulled away in the end, and for the second straight year, they will advance to the NECHL title game. For the second straight year, they're gonna do that without a first round bye. Canisius proven themselves to be a worthy opponent. And as I look to my right up in the stands sits the team they shall play tomorrow. And the Oswego State Lakers is a big hit there. Buffalo, yeah, they're going to try their best with a minute 70 to try to end the game with pressure and poise. As that gets sent in by Trigilio, and that is pushed to the side. One minute to go in the last minute of play. And now we're getting Here into the fist right of the play. Career is going at it. And there, yeah, nope, screw it, says Kelly. I'm not doing this. That was a smart move by Kelly. He said, screw this, I'm not doing it. Well, he had he was outnumbered two to one. He, I think he did deliver a little bit of a, yeah, of a gonna, late hit. They're going to throw him in the box. Which led to the retaliation there. And then again, the officials got in there pretty quickly. I mean, if you're Kelly, um, for UB, you know, obviously a disappointing end to your, your season. For all these UB seniors, um, you know, I think it's starting to set in with a minute left. This is the end of their season, a season in which they earned the two seed in the NECHL, but in their lone playoff game tonight, the offense was there, but you allowed 10 goals to a, a fierce, canisius opponent. And the Bulls will conclude their season here tonight in Oswego. Well, we are set, and the puck is dropped. And McGuy will take it with 50 to go in the third. Canisius has played a phenomenal, phenomenal game of hockey tonight. They've been playing phenomenal hockey all tournament long. Last night, a 6-2 win against Rutgers to get here. And now the fourth seeded Canisius, Golden Griffins, as that one gets sent across. Trying to get a stick on it, and we'll get a stick on it there. And trying to backhand it out is Johnson. Well, if there is an NECHL bracket tournament, I am 99% sure nobody had the one seed play in the fourth seed. But it looks like that will be the way. Canisius had a 6-2 win last night. They will take a 10-6 win against Buffalo tonight. And it looks like...
Buffalo will be the team, as that's actually not going to be covered. And Buffalo will be the team packing the bus and heading back to the city of Buffalo while Canisius will spend one more night and one more rest in the city of Oswego. And your final is set for the championship. It will be Oswego State, and it will be Canisius. What a game. It was a game, and, you know, for Canisius, it's got to feel really nice after last year's final, which was a hard-fought game. Coming into this one, the play style was nearly identical for the first 50 minutes, but in the latter half of the third period, Canisius proved that they were determined to upset Buffalo, get revenge for last season, and really a fantastic victory for them. They never trailed in this game. It was tied many times, but they never trailed in this game. Every time UB clawed their way back, Canisius had an answer. They had really more gas in the tank is what it came down to. And we'll see tomorrow. I'm excited for tomorrow's game because you have a team who scored 10 goals here in Canisius going against a team that scored eight, eight. goals in Oswego. It's going to be a high-powered matchup tomorrow. I'm excited to watch. A lot of here. offense, but I'll tell you what, both of these teams in Canisius and Oswego, they know each other pretty well, and I can only imagine what happens. Buffalo, you will head back. Of course, you guys will head back to... Buffalo with the team, and it has just been a great time. It's so good to have a color guy. It's great to have two color guys. You know, usually it's just me up in the booth, and it's been a great weekend, but we got one more game for me, and I just want to say thank you so much. So for everyone on the ice, and these two up here, John and Ryan, thank you so much. For everyone at home, it has been a great day, and we are officially have our final set. So tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern, it's Oswego and Canisius. For everyone on ice, and for the boys up in the booth, from the Steve Levy Press Box, it's always Derek Clark, a.k.a. Mini Doc. Until next time, folks, have a good night.